hello, what's going on? You are now chilling with the High Council. Wait, hold up. I'm going to do it. Three, two, one. Gather round, two believers that sip is still living. We are in the building for all you can and sensitive people out there. This is Cannon Talk with the great X Men Al, the incredible Izzy, your boy Hype Hooks, and me, myself, and known as CJ, aka Mick God. This is In the Name of Comics. Welcome. I love that. That was powerful. That was powerful. I got to work on mine now. Now you made me feel like mine's is lazy. I have to work on it. Oh, because you still don't see you. You still, you, I'm trying to give you the lane to make an intro. And you, I, I, you just want to walk in. You, you want to walk down the hill with a big stick. That's, that's it. what I want to do, bro. That's just walk, I just, walk down the street. Nah, I just want to say, I just wanna say you sounded like Stan Lee. Like it's when he says Excelsior on uh, cartoons, Excelsior. <laughs> That's what you say. I, I, I understand it. I fully understand it. Now, guys, we are meeting right here after this episode two of Miss Marvel, man. This is a beautiful, beautiful show. And we all watched it this time. This is great. What's going on, your ears, man? What's your first take on uh, Miss Marvel, man? What's going on with that? What did you see in that one? I um, want to retract my statement I said on a couple of episodes ago. I think when I said that her powers um, like kind of favor um, Mr. Fantastic, I see that it's a little bit more like cosmic magic in that. So that was that was like good to see and good to find out because I was like a little bit uninterested in this character. What you saw in the, the show isn't her actual um, comic book powers. They changed them, man. Mm. So, so in she, the comic book, she still reflects uh, Mr. Fantastic. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with light. It's still cosmic, but it has more to do with her pulling energy from all her multiversal selves. Um, from the looks of it, it looks like um, she's pulling energy through her body, but it's it's tapping a uh, extra dimensional source. Yeah. But I'm not talking about the the show yet. I'm talking about so I'm talking about the comic book. Do you do you remember the the source of in, the power comic? In the comics, she's she's basically um, what they call a, a new a new inhuman. Uh, meaning right. she's she's of inhuman. inhuman ancestry, but it skips generations. So right. she must she it must have been triggered by. Uh, um, Terrigen exposure to to trace amounts of Terrigen mist. The dossier on her powers. Well, with Kamala, it's, it's basically elongation um, and a, a select limited size alteration. There's also oh. limited plasticity, similar to Reed Richards, meaning like she's not necessarily bulletproof, but she's like bullet resistant to a certain extent. She's bullet and impact resistant to a certain extent. It acts like a conductor to right. the power. Um, n- no, more like a, a faucet. Mm. Mm. Word. Faucet. Like a faucet or a router. Mm. You can think of the, the multiverse of various dimensions, like um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, different networks. And the, uh, and um, certain items, and even in the MCU, act like a, a router or a faucet. So under we we fall under this. We're imperiologists. So imperiology is the study of superhuman powers. And <clears throat> Reed Richards said, I believe it's in the Four X limited series. Um between the Fantastic Four and the X-Men in the beginning of the House of X um, storyline. His hair is black now, he's a brunette. He doesn't really have his powers. And then we find out that his father put a dampener on his powers Mm. because he he didn't want it to get out of control. But in that, I believe Reed said something about all superhumans 
period, um, are actually channeling some kind of energy from some kind of, I think he called it like a God source or something. I, I don't remember the term. Yeah. So it isn't out of the spectrum for any superhero to say that they're pulling some kind of energy or that their powers come from some source. Marvel has already started to point in that direction. Yeah, they did that with, with the Hulk, with Immortal Hulk, the green door. Yeah. Each, ga each gamma radiated uh, hero and or character that has gamma based powers, yep. the, that gamma energy is, is actually coming from uh, the place below all. And it isn't even just gamma plates powers. It's all um, radioactive, um, radioactive power people. They have they haven't um, they haven't expounded on it for each main character yet. But Spider Man has the Web of Destiny, right? Um, radioactive. Hulk has uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is it below the level below? The, the place below all right He's, yeah we have um, we haven't seen exactly what daredevil uh what we haven't seen that ethereal place for daredevil yet which would be dope if we could figure that out right mm. what about doc samson doc, doc samson, samson would be the, the place like below the, all yeah mm. because of Same the thing for she hulk yeah, She-Hulk, Doc Samson, Hulk, Abomination, Leader, you know, they're all under that realm. Spider-Man, all the radioactive spiders, they're under mm -hmm. that realm, the Web of Destiny. Um, um, Spidey actually was ex uh, was exposed to chaos energies. He was he didn't realize he was a, a herald of uh, Master Order and Lord Chaos. Both he and Ben Grimm, they were chosen to represent those two cosmic entities in order to thwart Thanos' plans. That was back in like, I think the late 70s, early 80s or so. Um, and then another thing, Spidey, as well as Susan Richards, Bruce Banner, and even the Hulk, and even Juggernaut mm. years ago, were, uh, and X-23, were exposed to um, the Enigma Force dimensional energies. Okay, to the point where all of them were permanently amped to a certain extent. Not by a lot, but just, just by, by a small amount. Okay? Um, it's, it's the Captain Universe effect. The, 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 the Cosmic Spidey arc is. I think you may have read that arc. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that that's a very important um, thing to note because Marvel still has uh, the comic rights for the enigma to use the enigma force even though it's part of it, it was created under uh micronauts mm -hmm. okay. yeah um i hope I, if it was created under micronauts the marvel doesn't have it anymore yeah, micronauts no, marvel doesn't have the rights for micronauts but they do still have the rights for certain micronauts characters okay uh, i don't know about that yeah bug uh, bug the, the insect guy the Marvel still has the rights for him. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, Wasp for a while had joined the Micronauts crew for a short time. Yeah, but the uh, so, X Men Micronauts we were... series is is yeah. still canon. Um, it's just that like they they're not doing anything else with the uh, the Micronauts. They're they're not because they, so the Marvel has no, it... no legal rights for the, the, for the comics. Okay. Bring it. To bring it back, it was really about the source of powers. We were talking about Miss Marvel's powers and yep. the source of her powers. And Iz was saying that he didn't know. And I think that a lot of people, um, it's kind of showing, like a lot of people don't know who Miss Marvel is. Even we aren't as familiar with her as we would be other characters because she's new. And she's also been created to feed to a younger generation over us, yep. but I love I love her character. I think she's dope. I just don't know, like I haven't studied her like 
I would study Namor or, you know, Fantastic Four or, or X-Men or Thor or something like that. So, you know, it's indicative that people don't really even know, not enough people know her powers to even care that it's different. But I think that there's um something going on with that. I don't mean to cut in, but I think there's something going on with that. My first interaction with uh, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, was just like I said, my first interaction with uh, Kang, which was Lego Superheroes 2. Her powers were to elongate certain parts of her body, but she also had like a cosmic beam she would shoot. So when I saw that this... Like, like um, when they started showing her on TV and they like the shows that she's able to do like the stars or like like the little platforms, so to speak, those hardened lights, it wasn't like shocking to me. The only thing that was shocking was that the fact that instead of her body being able to elongate, which was she had almost perfect control over what she would make bigger or stronger, it's more along the lines of what cosmic energy that she could form from a thought. And it was great that um, in the episode, Bruno had like that little little iPad and he was looking at her and basically saying that the power was coming from within her. Now, that leads me to our first questions from the street. <laughs> they, they wanted to know what are those bands that she's using? Because now we know that there's still a chance, or at least we could still assume that there's still a chance they could tie in the inhuman heritage of the character because they didn't rely, like, like, like they, Marvel specifically doesn't show you anything for no reason. So the fact that they showed that part with Bruno saying, oh, the power's actually within you. It was at this moment that he knew he up. All right, um, first, I look at the metal. Um, it's it's not brass, even though it looks like it. It's not bronze, even though it looks like it. Um, the Inhumans, going back thousands of years, have used different types of metals. They even have a metal that duplicates the effects of vibranium to a certain extent. Um, for instance, they develop they developed that metal to even absorb uh, the vibration from Black Bolt's voice. Two thousand years later. So it and that uh, uh, that tech can actually be used to channel energies. So it could be that <clears throat> the the that that band that Kamala was wearing is thousands of years old. It may have been like one of the prototypes uh, of that of that technology. We don't rightly know. Uh, all we know is it's been in her family line for a. Uh, um, for decades at least you know for several decades i'd say or, or um over i think 80 years because it's uh, her grandmother said that her great grandmother had it so much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one okay. yeah, great grandma so, Asana. The family that had it. Mm -hmm. so it could be older than that um another thing there's a storyline where Karnak comes back from the human afterlife. Uh, when I saw the, the it, it looked like a whole bunch of like souls walking, you know, uh, gathered around. I'm thinking, okay, it, this could be the afterlife realm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then like their when, version when, of an ancestor when, plane, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like it, it, they, it literally the Inhumans afterlife is is their version of the ancestral plane. The question they, is like just uh -huh. to, just to answer their question, what would you say out of your knowledge of bands that you have in the Marvel universe? You know, or well, like um C J Cone last time M C M. You know, um, what would you say those bands would closely relate to? Knowing that we got Secret Wars coming up, knowing that we, we've already seen like the 10 bands and Shang-Chi, like what would you think that those bands would quote, um, like be? Hmm. Like if you had to name them, based on what you've seen so far. Uh, it may have Iridium. 
they're, they're, they may actually be closer related to a combination of both the mega bands and the quantum bands because of the the, the, the energies that they that they channel seem to be dimensional based. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. I'm glad we got that one answered. I, I you know, what, how do you feel about that? You know, like, cause we got the, we got the actual origin story of the metal that was used in the band that was on Miss Marvel. But what do you, what do you feel in, in, in relation to that question? Okay. First and foremost, let's break it down like this. Tell us. Miss uh, Kamala Khan's powers, as far as the comic books go, morphogenics, morphogenetic, the ability for her cells manifest mutable properties due to the fact that she is able to share mass through time with different versions of herself. On a molecular level, Miss Marvel time travels whenever she uses her powers. She can stretch, deform, expand, or compress her entire body or parts thereof into any contiguous shape she can imagine for a variety of uses. I do not believe that that part of her powers have changed. So, she is time traveling every time she uses her powers. That automatically puts her in the, if we were gonna give it the Nega Band or the Quantum Band, that would be the Quantum Band for the MCU. So that's one. Elongation, size alteration, accelerated healing factor, appearance, alteration, all that is cool. Here's the, here's the, uh, the crazy part. Realize she had this power. Kamala's body emits a glowing yellow energy signature when using her morphogenic powers. So, I don't even, they switched it for the show. It's not going to be the lightning, it's going to just be kind of like a, a S or something like that. It hmm. shows up, it shows up behind her when they're on the roof of Circle Q. With along with the Edison Electronics or Edison Electric, whatever that is, but it's not um, going to be part of her suit, according to the pictures that we see. Um, so bioluminescence. Here's the thing about bioluminescence. I did an uh, article on that when I was doing um, when I was writing uh, about. Black Widow, there were, there was some form of vials that they were trying to get. And they were, um, who was it? I forgot her name, but Nat's fake parents were in the movie. They were spies, um, David Hauser, what did he play? I forgot Red his Guardian. name. Red Guardian. And um, Iron Maiden. I, you know, the names escape us. There's so much going on. So anyway, there was the, uh, they were, in, they infiltrated the North Institute to get these vials to be able to create super soldiers from the beginning of the movie, right? So, what we know about bioluminescence is that different colors, the same way as the gems, um, same way as the affinity gems, represent or have a different effect on someone. So in the MCU, yellow energy would be the Mind Stone, right? Um, time stone was actually green so we that does that negates that um so me thinking that they're using the colors that come out of the band and saying that it goes to that energy for the time stone i can't say that it looks like she has multiple colors in there 
So maybe she's using some kind of, um, she's using multiple like things going on. I don't it think seems like quantum, they're... I don't think they're the quantum bands, even though that's what would make the most sense. The nega bands make sense because of the things that you guys were talking about, where when she put it on, she went into she went, you know, in she went inverse as if maybe she went into the negative zone. Yep. But we did not nobody's ever talked about that. When we look at it, to me, I saw cracks of energy, which immediately made me think of Karnak. So I'm automatically still looking, you know, I'm I'm already like looking for inhuman clues and all of that stuff. Um, we already know the gin is gonna be a part of it, so I'm really thinking that that was maybe the gin. I froze the picture to look at it to see if maybe they were on the moon, but there were trees in the background on the right hand side of that image, so they were still somewhere on Earth, or they were on some planet that had trees. The moon doesn't have trees. Um, um, I I really think. To be honest with you, that it's gonna be a comp. I really think that what we should be calling that those bands are Terrigen Crystal bands that are being held by maybe iridium, um, some other kind of metal that's allowing the Terrigen Crystal to affect Kamala's um, body and to use, channel her powers. Yeah, right, going cool. back to what you said, there's, that there's no there's no trees on the moon. Be careful with that. The reason I say is, in, in the, at least in the comics, when the scrolls brought the, the primitive uh, Kree and the primitive Kotati, Kotati or, or plant race, to Earth's moon, they, uh, they said, okay, we want you to build or whatever, you know, see, and we'll judge you on that. The Kree built a, sea, a city, okay, and the Kotati built a garden. And both of those were, were encapsulated in under a breathable, a prep breathable atmosphere environment, micro environment. You're 100% right. Okay. 100% right. Yeah. So it could still be the moon. It really could still be the moon. Yeah. Mm. All right, that's interesting because I thought they were just trying to push it towards the usage of her light powers. Or just trying to like, if they put it like this, the benefit of them like trying to keep it light and pretty much making her a conductor like she gets stronger based on the the light energy that's around her allows her to be a lot more stronger. Like she's a conductor herself, and um, not not a conductor. She benefits off of that. Once they do the teaming of like the Marvels, and you got Captain Marvel, which is like almost unlimited light energy. It should make her a lot stronger. So that's a way they could tie it in. Okay. Because in the comics, Carol Danvers is a energy converter. Okay. Even in a binary form, she's an energy converter. But mm -hmm. in hu the Inhumans have a history of having members that are also energy converters. Primarily among them is Black Bolt. Okay. But there's something else. Back to what you were saying that uh, Kamala uh, uh, um, time travels every time she basically uses her powers. Okay, mm -hmm. it could be that um, the uh, the the she's emitting either uh, or, uh, chronal particles, okay, and or she's emitting tachyons. Now uh, mm -hmm. in Marvel, tachyons mm -hmm. can be used to time travel or to manipulate time and or reality, okay? They can actually be, be used to jam cosmic awareness, not just in Marvel, and they, but- And they create hard light, though. Yes. Um, for instance, um, look at uh, the Shape of Worlds um, apprentice, Glorian. He used, he's a perfect example of a tachyon energy user. When he uses tachyon powers, what do they look like? Light, uh, uh, so solid light, similarly to Bifrost. 
Mm. And the Bifrost Bridge. Hard light. There you go. Okay. Wait, and wait. Power Pack. One of the Power Pack kids yeah. can assume a hard light form. Okay. Mm. And and what I love about that is the 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 alien that gave her that power, okay. Um, mm -hmm. He's from an alien race that also has Inhumans of his race, and we met them in a Jonathan Hickman run of a FF related storyline, where we find out that um there there's multiple Inhuman races. They're not limited to uh, Inhumans of Earth. What you had to say, Hans? The Jubilee be a, a, a lighter level of that? Jubilee has plasma generation. Mm. Okay. Um, it's 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 she she has a potential to do hard light stuff, but uh, it's it's not it's not there yet. I, I I don't know why I just heard it now, but you said that she time travels every time that she uses her power. They shown throughout the show, and and I don't think I connected this until right now, episode one and two, that there's a moment. It's not like right as she uses her powers, but it's like she almost. I didn't think about it until now, so entertain this. When they sh when she had that moment at the table where they were talking about the story of her grandmother and her great grandmother, and she almost passed out. She saw a, a vision of a woman. When she saves that little boy that was same falling, thing. that was falling out of it, she had the same vision of the same woman who ends up meeting her at the end inside the car with Cameron. Cameron, yeah, come, my bad. Same tribes, same bloodlines, you know, I mean, same so, thing. Yeah, because well, usually tribes is, is many clans to join together. So other but than they, the fact... More than that, it's more than that. It's It's got to do with the ability to use the the bands to have power. You have, that's, that's in your blood. You know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, I know. It's, in the it's, blood. Um, Genet what the, it's referred to as genetic attenuation or gen no, a genetic attunement. Okay. And well, in you in regular language, it's called bloodline. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 with that with that being said, that leads to the next question from the street. Uh, you know, we the got up off of Miss Marvels, bro. How we get up off Miss Marvels? We ain't even talking about it. This is still Miss Marvel. This is all still Miss Marvel. So the question okay. from the street is basically asking, do you think that those visions that she's seeing are warnings or flashes from the past? Um, could be a combo. that's what I was trying to connect. Yeah, it could be a combo of both. But he here's the thing. I, think I have a bad. feeling that her ancestor that was uh, the band user, uh, the previously recorded band user, Mm -hmm. may have fully inter uh, entered that other dimension and is trying to contact uh, her descendant, okay? Because uh, the more, because you notice, the, the more Kamala uses the band for extended prolonged period of time, repeated prolonged period of time, the more frequent she's, she's seeing those images. Yes, and it's a lot longer and more vivid yeah. as she used it. Yeah, and, and there's another thing. Who's to say that there could be another band? That there, there's not another band? Because usually in Marvel, it's a matching set. That's what I was saying before. I think that there's going to be another band. I know some stuff about, about this, but I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So that's yeah. why I'm kind of like... No, nah, no, nah, don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Um, yeah. um, because all if I can say what... is that... <laughs> Can we, if important. we get back to that bloodline real quick, just so I could figure okay. it out. Okay. So bloodline or that very long extended two words with a bunch of syllables you said, right? <laughs> now, any way you look at it, does that mean that maybe Kamala Khan was crushing on her cousin? Um, because for, like, 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 because you said like the bloodline. So if they're sharing the bloodline, that lady that she met at the end, when I first saw her at the ending, I didn't connect the visions. I was like, yo, that's the long lost aunt right there. She just popped up. Cause that's how movies usually are. And then she said, I've been waiting a long time to see All you. Right, it wasn't um, until my second round that I figured out it was. 
the same woman, and that might I'm, not be I'm it. I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you that most people don't realize. Inhumans have a history of arranged marriage in regards to bloodlines. Black Bolt married his cousin. Medusa is his cousin. Okay. Where Robin? Oh. <laughs> so, so that 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 was um that took a little turn right there. So the chances are of Kamran being her cousin is a is a is a could be. Like, that's what you're saying. Based off what you're saying, it could be. Could be. <laughs> said that she said that was her cousin. In 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 trying to throw a brother off, that's why I'm could, like. The reality is that it could be her cousin. Yep, it could be. Ah, oh, Uncle Chaudry. Ah, oh, Uncle Chaudry. That's crazy. A distant so, distant cousin, obviously. But yeah, I mean, yeah, the Inhumans are definitely inbreeders. Um. It just is what it is. That, that, yeah. yeah, they they actually have a genetic council that tra- that keeps track of the bloodlines. And I mean that that's just inherit. They inherited that kind of um, doing that from the Cree. Yep. Because the Cree were um, classes through bloodlines as well, like pink skin, blue skin. You know, the lighter your skin was, the more inferior your race was. Your you know. You were the inferior. You were lower class. Um, so yeah, all of that, all of that plays into. If she, I, I believe that she's going to end up being, um, clearly placed as an inhuman in the MCU. I think they did a roundabout because they didn't want to yeah. do the Terrigen bomb story. Or at least do it yet. I don't think that um, she necessarily had to have that to make it right. I think episode two did a great job in giving her her ethnicity, which is what I think was one of the most important parts of Kamala being Kamala. So they did. I don't know if they did the best that they could have done by her because it felt like they kind of threw everything into one episode instead of yeah. it being natural. It seemed a little unnatural, which is the part I didn't like about the episode. But yeah, she, um, Kamran is definitely could be her cousin, and there's nothing strange about that when you're talking about it, humans. I I actually went to go look up some stuff into Miss Marvel, and it was funny that Kamran's name actually pops up from the past, as if they had a a little fling relationship or something, or they they met each other. Actually, in, like it shows up in this Miss Marvel thing. Cam Kamran, he's, um, he's from her. He's from the comics. Yeah, that, I didn't know. That's what I'm saying. This is all new. So I found out that he was in the comics. He's actually an human as well. Yeah, and they. And the powers that she's using is supposedly more similar to the powers that Cameron has. Yeah. That was interesting that's news what, to me. But like, like, that's why yeah. I think that, yeah, not only could they be cousins, but they're definitely from the same bloodline. Mm. That don't mean cousins because you're from the same bloodline, but it does mean that probably somewhere in your distant, 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 you know how many of us um, yeah. are dealing with people that we are probably distant, 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 we had some kind of relative back in the day. That's just being, that's just being alive. You know what I'm saying? It's not like um, Emperor Augustus or something like that trying to speak with his sister or something. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. Um, here goes something I, I, I don't know if any of you have spotted it yet. Um, both in the comics, uh, well, in the comics, we know that there were various inhuman temples. Okay. Um, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's an inhuman temple 
under uh, the fortress known as El Morro in Puerto Rico. And that's where uh, um, uh, Sky's powers got activated through the Terrigen Mist explosion. Okay? In the comics, there's an inhuman temple in a- a- Atalan, the inhuman city of Atalan. Okay? Um, who's to say there's there wasn't one somewhere in the um, in this valley thousands of years earlier or well, things that make you say mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. and then uh, we don't know what direction the Marvel writers the uh, uh, MCU MCM writers will go with this Right. But like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I believe that in the end, we will be able to begin to determine that Kevin Feige has acquiesced and allowed Miss Marvel to remain an inhuman. So take that from it, whatever, take from it, whatever you will. And I'll see y'all at the se- this season finale, either with egg on my face or a big smile. And I told you so sign. Hmm. As we talk about theories that go real far, I was waiting for a way to put this weird question into our conversation. But this is probably the most far off of our questions from the street. You know it too. Now, the connections, just like you said, we could speculate where we think it's connected or how these things are going to come to pass. One of the questions is now going back to Miss Marvel as they discuss, oh, there was so much shame put on your mother's name and she didn't deserve that shame that she went through. Knowing it's uh, um, the, the, the Muslim heritage. And this was the question. Do you believe that the shame that the family faced is because the great grandmother ran off with a woman? And if so, is that woman connected to America Chavez is one of her moms. Ooh. Somebody got jokes, man. What the? <laughs> what? Hey, yo, I can't uh, take that. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man. no, listen. Somebody Let's have fun has, with it. Somebody has it really in for. That somebody wants. Somebody wants a uh, girl kiss. I don't know what in the world's going on. I, listen, I I thought it was very interesting. I don't think, I don't think it, tie, it ties into I don't, it. I don't think it ties, but they're, it ties they're pulling it. it. They're pulling it from, because I had to ask them myself. I was like, why, why, why is this a question? It was like, yo, listen to me, listen to me. Remember when they was at the table and they said that how she found her way back onto the train because she followed yeah. a bunch of stars. Now trail think about the stars, star, a trail of stars. And we know that stars come from America. And then the shame would be something like that. Do you think that that's what it was? Because one of the women that she described as her parents, one of them looked Indian. I didn't go back to check for myself, but uh, that's just, this. Listen, only thing I thought is maybe at some point in the future we see America had to go back into the past to help save, you know, her yeah. parents. Yeah. To help, um, help save Aisha. Yeah. Like, who, who is uh, Kamala's great grandmother? But yeah, the Trail of Stars was definitely, you know, interesting. But nah, I, nah. Y'all gotta let the, go. The Trail of Stars go. is more in common with the the, the mega bands. <laughs> it's more common <laughs> to that. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know why I'm going to ask this, but I'm going to ask is how. How? <laughs> how, okay. how is the trail you, of stars? You, uh, you look at um, 
uh, the old school Captain Marvel stuff. When he used the Nega bands, it, when he, he fly through space, it, it looked like a trail of stars. Oh, all right, all right, all right, good. That was a lot shorter that than that. That was I a thought. dead giveaway. That's why I wasn't surprised. I was like, oh, they, it's, it's a combination of the Nega bands and, or, or, and the quantum bands. The quantum the the quantum bands, um, uh, usually the wheel of the quantum bands, uh, does leave well. It's some part of their 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 appearance has stars in it. Okay, in Quasar's uh, case, it was his cape. All right, all right, okay, all right. That that, that explains that one. <laughs> It definitely yeah. explains that one. That's it for me, bro. Y'all got anything else? Um, no, not right now. I don't want to blow anybody's minds. Izzy? Mm -hmm. And hooks. All I have to do is add rigor. We out. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming for episode three of cannon talk with the high council we took our time we're trying to do this consistently every week for you guys we hope you drop some gems in here to make you guys think or give you something to research or maybe even find some comic books to go invest in just in case we are on point and make yourself some money um please subscribe to this channel press the like button Meet us in the comments and also go to www.inthenameofcomics.com and subscribe for all our future events as well as everything else that we're trying to do for our communities. Besides that, we're on IG, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and as you already know, YouTube. Peace out. Stay calm. Stay canon sensitive. And we out of here. Cannon! Talkie, 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 talkie. <laughs>